Hello friends, welcome back to All in a Law. Guys, today's topic of discussion is Compalobacter. That's a medical video lecture, microbiology. And today's topic is Compalobacter jejuni. C. jejuni. Okay. So before starting a discussion on this, I would like to brief you about our channel. Our channel has more than 600 currently and we are uploading each day. We are uploading more and more videos on different medical topics that are helpful for USMLE appearing students. So guys, please do subscribe to our channel and please do share our videos with your friends. So let me quickly start. See Jejuni. Okay. The Campylobacter jejuni, the important points, tell me it's a gram positive or a gram negative, it's a gram negative, okay. Are the rods of the cone, are the rods or bacilli, it's their rods, okay, they are rods, right. So let me draw a diagram, they are curved rods, you can see, okay, they are curved rods, right, they are curved rods, but now they have the flagella, this is flagella. okay flagella and they are the important points is they are oxidase positive oxidase positive okay so try to remember about this and these are really very important they are gram negative rods curved rods okay they are oxidase positive they have a polar uh, flagella okay and the other important thing is they are micro aerophilic micro aerophilic okay they are micro aerophilic so let's talk about this uh, campylobacter jejuni so campylobacter jejuni but, uh, the other feature of this is they grow at the temperature grow well at the temperature of 42 degrees centigrade so remember about this temperature important for USML is step on examination okay and what is the media or agar that can be used to grow this is a selective media that is a campy media or skiro media skiro agar or campy media okay got it guys so let's talk about the reservoir so who is the reservoir for this is the intestinal tract of the humans and other organisms so remember the poultry sheep dogs cats and the cattle okay what about the transmission how they are transmitted through the fecal oral route right fecal oral route okay primarily from poultry so if in USML examination if they tell you that the patient is work he works in a poultry and um, he develops a diarrhea so try to think of this compilobacter jejuni okay so what's the pathogenesis? Pathogenesis. The pathogenesis is as a, what you call, um, it invades the mucose of the colon. If this is a colon, okay. If this is a colon, colon, colon. I don't know whether it's a true colon or not. Okay, let me draw you. It invades the mucosa over here, over here, okay. It invades the mucosa, okay. And destroying the mucosal surface, uh, blood in the pus in the stools. So it leads to ultimately inflammatory diarrhea. ID inflammatory diarrhea so you see sometimes you can see the blood and the pus in the stool okay so in USML examination if you see if you see what you call a pus and a bloody diarrhea then think of one of the cause could be compilobacter jejuni okay so what are the diseases that it can cause is a gastroenteritis okay so remember about the gastroenteritis with the frank blood okay mm, per uh, what do you call rectum okay and it's usually a self-limiting within three to five days, but it can be a longer also. The complication that's really very important about this disease, about this bacteria, is GBFs, gullen barre syndrome. gullen barre syndrome. Very important because this can be asked in USML examination. Okay, guys. Remember. Others, uh, what you call serotype O19 antigenic cross reactivity between uh, 
Campylobacter, oligosaccharides, and glycosphingolipids on neural tissues. This is, so there is a cross reactivity. Okay, between you can remember this one O nineteen. Okay, zero. Okay, right. So it also can cause reactive arthritis, but remember about this gastroenteritis, that's really very important for USMLE examination. Okay. So how would you treat that? Tell me. First, whenever there is a diarrhea, try to maintain the hydration through the what you got fluids and the electrolyte replacement. And the drugs you can use are uh, anthromycin, penicillin resistance, like you can use the fluoroquinolones, penicillin resistance. Okay. So guys, I'm sure this video is really very helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Take care.